Sinusoidal functions. Uh, the first step in sinusoidal functions is understanding what a radian is because your calculators will now have to be in radian mode. I'm not going to say 100%. Uh, it's possible. We will do some stuff with our calculator in degree mode, but we will also use radian mode. I think as far as the diploma goes, you're pretty much just going to be in radian mode, okay? Which is good, because when you clear your calculator, it ends up in radian mode, all is good, all right? But you may have to flip back and forth between degree mode and radian mode based on the question that you're um, answering, and that will only be sinusoidal function stuff, right? It's got nothing to do with anything else. So the mode you're in, degrees or radians for logarithmic or exponential or any other unit, probability, has no bearing, okay? The only time degrees or radians matters is when you're answering a sinusoidal function question. And they will all be together on the diploma, okay? So they're not going to scatter them. When you hit one, then you've hit the group of them, and the, you know, four or five or whatever, however many there are. Um, so that's uh, what you're going to get. So here's a circle, or we'll pretend this is a circle. What do you know about a circle? Round, and if you're going to measure around how many? 360 degrees, right? So a circle has 360 degrees, right? We know this, 360 degrees in a circle. And so what's one degree? What is one degree? I'm going to call that one degree. You know, it probably isn't, but I need to draw something pretty small. What's one degree? Okay, let me help you out on this. It's one three hundred and sixtieth of the way around a circle, right? So if we take one degree, if we do that three hundred and sixty times, we're going to have worked our way around the circle, right? So one degree is one three hundred and sixtieth of the way around a circle. Why three hundred and sixty? Okay, that one was rhetorical, right? I mean, nobody actually knows. We could speculate on it. Eh, it's 365 days in a year. It's close to that. Uh, my personal theory is that 360 is divisible by a lot of numbers, right? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, not 7, not 8, 9, 10, 12. You know, a lot of numbers go into it, so we can divide that up. Uh, you know, 90 goes into it. That's how we get you know, 90 degrees. We get right angles and stuff like that. But, you know, if aliens landed on Earth and we said a circle is 360 degrees, they like, why 360? What are you talking about? So it's arbitrary, right? Somebody chose that number, and it just has come into common usage. Well, now there's something called a radian. And a radian is an angle measurement. It's another way of measuring an angle. So degrees is one way. There's 360 of them in a circle, 90 degrees in a right angle, and all that good stuff. There's 180 degrees in a semicircle, right? Halfway around would be 180 degrees. So radian is an alternate way of measuring an angle. And it's a way that would make sense if aliens did land on Earth, and we were going to talk about measuring angles in a circle. It's a way that would make sense to them. And here's how a radian works. So what we do is we start off with a circle. And a circle has this distance here, which is called the radius, right? And <coughs> the circumference of a circle is the distance around. What's the formula for circumference? Come on, you can do this. 2 pi r, right? 2 pi r. So we know that's the distance around. So here's how we get a radius. What we do is we take the length of the radius, and so just imagine that I take a piece of string and lay it off for the radius, and then I take that string and I lay it around the outside of the circle so that this measurement along this curve is also equal to r. Okay? So we've got a circle, it has a radius, we take that radius, probably need to go a little bit further here. We take that radius, we lay it off along the circle, and that's. R, and then we complete this to make an angle. 
And this angle here, and this will be R here as well, this angle here is called one radian. So that's an alternate form of angle measurement is radians. How many of these guys, how many of these are, R's, are there around the outside of the circle? How many R's? You know, so if I laid off this R, how many times would I have to do that? How many times would I have to lay off the R? Two pi of them, right? Because we know the distance around is two pi R. So there are two pi radians in a circle which isn't much, right? Because 2 pi is like 6.28, right? Pi is 3.14 and so on. 2 pi is 6.28. So this one radian, it's about equal to 60 degrees, right? It's closer to 58, but it's easier to say it's about 60 degrees, right? Which means that there are about six of them in a circle, but there's a little bit more, right? There's 2 pi radians in a circle, which is 6.28 of them, right? So degrees are little small things and radians are bigger things, right? What we need to do though is we just need to know that there is such a thing as a radian. Here's what it is. You're not going to be asked to convert, but I'm going to give you some numbers just so we become familiar. Okay, so let's get some perspective on this. So two pi radians, which is about 6.28 radians is 360 degrees. A semicircle is 180 degrees, so that'll be half. That's pi radians, which is about 3.14 radians. And all I'm doing is converting from uh, pi, in terms of pi to a decimal, is 180 degrees. And Pi over 2 radians, so half of 180, which is about 1.57 radians, is 90 degrees. Okay? So if you see something that looks like it's about 1.6, if you're looking along an x scale, and you see something that's a little bit over 3, then you figure, hey, that's probably 3.14, it's probably pi radians, right? If you see something that's a little bit over six, like when we're measuring on the x-axis, you see that's a little bit over six, it's probably two pi radians, right? And if you see something you know, around 1.6, that's probably pi over two radians or 90 degrees. Okay, any questions on radians? This is really all we need to know about it, right? If you look through 8.1, they do all this conversion and stuff and, you know, we just need to be kind of familiar with, that's what a radian is. It's when you take the radius, measure along the arc of the circle, you get that angle, it's called a radian. Uh, that your calculator may need to be in radian mode for that. Okay, next. We are going to look at the graph of y equals sine theta. And we can do that on our calculator. Okay, so let's get out our calculators. And I will just pause there. So first off, let's set the calculator into degree mode, okay? So go mode, and go down here, it, and it's probably in radians, right? Because you would have cleared it after the test and that. We're going into degree mode. We're going to graph sine theta, and we're going to set a window. And for this window, we're going to do it in degrees. Let's go from 0 degrees to 720 degrees with a scale of 90 degrees. Okay, so from 0 to 720 with a scale of 90. And let's go with y min as negative 2 to positive 2 with a scale of 1. Okay, so I'll leave that up for a sec so that you can enter the window settings. So 0 to 720 for the x's with a scale of 90, negative 2 to 2 for the y's with a scale of 1. We're going to go into y equals, and we're going to say sine, and then hit x. And we're going to graph that. Okay, so we go to y equals, you press sign, then x, close the bracket, hit enter, and there is your new friend, the sinusoidal function, right? Get you for four days, anyways, and then a little bit on tests and cumes in the final exam. So this is y equals sine x, it's the basic sine function. 
Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Desmos. I'm going to go to Desmos. And we'll graph the same thing. So y equals sine x. And there's the sine function. Now it's graphing in radians. So I think I can go to settings. Can I go to settings? I'm going to change the settings to degrees. Okay. Now if I do that, we know that we were graphing from 0 to 720. So I'm going to go set these windows. So it matches. So I'm going to go 0. 720 and we were going from like negative 2 to 2 and so there we go so what we're looking at here is our new friend the sinusoidal function okay and I like to look at a sinusoidal function as being split into four parts okay and for some reason we can't see that edge let me just move that over that's a little better Okay, so sine sort of function is, is to me divided into four parts. It starts here, and then it goes up and it reaches a maximum value, and then it comes back to the middle, and then it goes down and it hits a minimum value, and then it comes back to the middle, and then it comes up and hits a maximum value. And those four parts happen every 90 degrees, okay? So from 0 to 90 degrees is when it goes from the middle to the maximum. It goes from the middle, sorry, from the maximum back down to the middle. That takes another 90 degrees, right? So we're taking something that happens over 360 degrees, sorry, 360 degrees, which is there. Scale is 25, so I think. That's 360 degrees. We're splitting it into four parts. Each of those parts will be 90 degrees and then another 90 degrees to hit the minimum, so it's gonna hit the minimum value at 270 degrees and then come back to the middle, back to its starting point, right? And I say it starts because this is where it's at zero, zero. Climbs up, falls back down to the middle, and we call the middle, this is something special, this is called the midline or the median. Okay. Like the median runs down the middle of the road, right? And you can never make those left-hand turns when you want to because the median's in the way. So the median is in the middle. We call it the median or the midline. This distance here, we call the amplitude. And it's the distance from the median or the midline to the max or the min, right? Because it also works down here the same, right? This is the amplitude. So either one of those two. Or sometimes I like to think of it as half the distance between the maximum and the minimum, right? So halfway between, how far apart are these guys? They're two units apart. The amplitude is half of that, okay, which is one unit in this case, right? Because we're going to start playing with this function. Right? We're going to do stuff with it and you know, mess around with it. So that's known as the amplitude. We've got the midline. There's something else going on here, which is the amount of time it takes to complete one cycle is the period. Okay? And this is one cycle. And a cycle is going through all four parts, right? Remember the four parts? From the middle to the max, from the max back to the middle, from the middle down to the minimum, and from the minimum back to the middle, that's one complete cycle, right? It's gone through all the possible values. And you see this one is just repeating the cycle, right? Again, it starts at the middle, goes to the max, and all of that stuff. So that's called the period. And all these definitions are in your book on, uh, I think, page 492. It's all on the right-hand margin of 492, I think. I will check. Yes, so all of that is, is in there, right? Midline, amplitude, period, right? That's all defined. And we're going to get a lot more familiar with this stuff as we go along. But this is the basic. So this is the basic sign for, right? There's no big changes here. It's just y equals sine x. There's nothing else in there. There's nothing modifying it. This is the starting point for all sinusoidal functions. 
Okay, now let's switch to radian mode. So what I'm going to do is just, uh, I'm going to pause and just... Are we on? Yes. Okay, calculator. Let's go to mode on the calculator. Let's go to mode and let's change it to radians, right? Which is pretty much where you're going to be a lot of the time. Um, maybe not so much in some of the sections of the book, but otherwise with, with real life stuff. And sinusoidal functions are more real life functions than just this, right? They describe a lot of things that basically are periodic in nature. So if you think of the temperature cycle that we go through during the year, Right? We have really cold temperatures, then it warms up, and then it gets cold again, and then it warms up, and it gets cold again, and so on. If you think of the time of sunrise, right? Sunrise is later in the winter, then it gets earlier in the summer, and then it gets later, and that's a cyclical pattern. All of these could be described by this particular function. Okay, we change to radians. Let's change our window. So in radians, let's go 0 to 2 pi, because now we do stuff in terms of pi. So go 2, and then second function, pi. And let's change our scale, and I like a scale of pi divided by 2. And all your calculator is going to do is fill in those numbers, right? It's going to, when you put in 2 pi, hit enter, it gives you the 6.28. Go pi over 2, it gives you this. And now we can hit graph, and this time we're going to see one cycle, one period, right? So we know that the period of the sinusoidal function is 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. Okay? That's what the period of a sinusoidal function is. 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. Okay, I'm going to go to decimals. We're going to change this to radian. Now, when I hit radians here, one cycle only takes up this much space, right? So we're going to see something happen. I'm just going to do that. Right? Because remember, each cycle is 2 pi, which is about 6.28. So I need to change my scale, and I'm going to label this, and we'll go from uh, 0. So let's just change this to 0. 0, and we'll change this one to 2 pi. 2 pi, does that work? Maybe not. So let's go to 6.28. And I can now uh, get rid of this. No, wait a sec. I want to erase this. Uh, y axis labels can be numbers, one, two, three. Okay, good. And why is this so wide? I don't know if I can move this all right. No, okay. I'll move that as well. Yeah, I could press hide. You're right. Press hide. Wow. And let's move. Okay. Wow, now things have gone everywhere. I have no idea where anything is. Okay, wait. It's coming back. Let's go back. To All right, here. That's nice. We'll just go with this. Okay, so we've got 0 to 2 pi. Now notice, things are happening in four pieces, right? The pieces now are not 90 degrees. They're half pies because there are four halves in 2. Right? How many halves are there? There's four of them, right? So we've got half pi. You reach from midline to maximum. Half pi to get back to the midline. Half pi to get down to the minimum. Half pi. So you've got a half pi, one pi, one and a half pies, or an, and two pi. Right? Now this continues forever in both directions. You can see how it's going, you know, and that's what the sinusoidal function does. Its domain is all real numbers. Its range is from positive one to negative one. Okay, its period is 2 pi. Its amplitude is 1, right? Amplitude is distance from midline to the maximum or from the midline to the minimum or the distance from the max to the min divided by 2, right? This distance is 2 units divided by 2 gives you the amplitude, which is 1. The midline here is at 0. The intercepts are every pi, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, no pi, negative 1 pi, negative 2 pi. Those are your x-intercepts. In degrees, this would be 180, 360, 540. It would be every multiple of 180 degrees or every multiple of pi radians, right? So in degrees, 
negative 180, no 180, 0, 1 180, 2 180s or 360, 3 of them, and so on. Okay. So that's period uh, in radians, right? So period in radians, 2 pi. Interesting points, right? We've got a maximum, we've got a minimum, we've got zeros. We're split into four parts, 1, 2, 3, 4. Those four parts put all together make one cycle or the period, right? The period is the length of time. Okay, now I need to unhide what I hid. How do I unhide? <laughs> oh, maybe this. Okay, I'm going to unhide that. We're going to slide this over a bit here. We're going to take these labels away. Okay, we'll leave this because we can see a number of cycles. And we're going to modify this now, right? So what we're now going to look at is an equation in this form. Y equals A sine BX plus C plus D. And we want to take some note of what do each of these letters, A, B, C, D, what do they do to that basic sine function? Okay. So we're going to go in and we're going to play with, I'm going to write this equation in, and we're going to play with A, B, C, and D and see what it does. So you could do this on your calculator as well. It's just not as easy to see stuff, right? It's much easier up here. So, back here. So I'm going to throw in an A. And I'm going to go along here and put in a B. And I'm going to put in a plus C. And I'm going to go out here and put in a plus D. And decimal says, do you want to add a slider for this? And we've seen that before. So I say, add a slider for all of them. Okay, so what happens? So A is 1, I want that. B is 1, I want that. C, I want to be 0 to start with, right? We'll play with it later. And D, I want to be 0 to start with. So this function is the same one that we just looked at before, right? Starts at 0. No, it doesn't because D is a little bit off. Go to zero. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, this is the function we looked at, right? Zero, two pi, we got a period of two pi, right? It's split into four parts. We got a maximum of pi over two, right? I can hit that and show it. What I'm going to do is, un hey, go away. Well, whatever. I'm going to change D. You're going to watch the graph and you're going to say, okay, what changes when I change D? So what's happening to the graph? So it's moving, yeah, it's just moving up or down, right? Let's try and get it as 2. There, now it's 2. So what changed? Did the shape of the graph change? No. Did the period change, the amount of time it takes to run through that complete cycle? No. Did the, uh, so did the midline change? Where's the midline? Where's the middle? At what value? Middle is at zero. Where's the middle? Three, so what's D? The middle value or the midline, right? So D is the midline. So first observation, right? D is the midline or median. It caused the graph to move up or down, right? It didn't change anything else. It just shifted the graph up or down. So D shifted the graph. D units. Okay, so if D was 3, it went up 3. If D is negative 3, what's it going to do? So if D is negative 3, it moves down 3. Okay, and here we're talking about the midline, right? This value here. The amplitude is still 1 unit, right? So the amplitude didn't change. The period is still from there. So it starts here, right? Runs through one complete cycle. So the period is still 2 pi. 
the yeah okay we're not getting into C just yet okay let's reset so we're going to change things it's best to change one thing at a time right so let's move D back to zero and I'm now going to play with A so as I play with A what happens The amplitude changes, right? I guess I shouldn't make it too big. Let me change that. So A is 5. What's the amplitude? Five. How do you figure out the amplitude? Count from the middle, which is at 0. So does the middle change? No, because D is zero, right? We know that D changes the middle or the midline or the median, whatever you want to call it. So the amplitude is now five. What's A? Five. So what's A stand for? A is for amplitude. Okay. So A is the amplitude. Remember, all this stuff's defined, nice little picture definition stuff on 492, right? So if you forget, you can always look back there. and It'll show you a nice little picture, right? So A is the amplitude. D is the midline. I like to start with that because we just look at it and say, we didn't change anything, just you moved the whole thing up or down, right? But A, that changes the amplitude. If I play with A and D, let's just take this down to say 3. So there's three. Okay, now what's going to happen if I change D? What's it going to do? It's going to move up or down, right? Does the shape change? No. So A changed the shape of the graph, and D doesn't change the shape. It just changes its placement, right? Its vertical placement. In, in, uh, in other words, we, we could say it's a vertical translation or a vertical shift. Uh, we call it actually a vertical displacement. You don't really need to know the technical terms. The technical name is it's a vertical displacement, right? But it's just moving up or down. That's good enough for us, right? D moves the midline up or down. A changes the amplitude, right? Makes it taller or smaller. I can also make it smaller, right? Let's go down to like uh, 0.5. Well, 0.69, right? So you can see. And what happens if A goes negative? So there's positive A. There's negative A, it flips, right? So it's, it's reflected. You don't have to worry about that. I don't think we'll be dealing with any negative A's. But for those of you that have done 3 dash one it's a reflection in the y-axis. It's a vertical translation, right? So a vertical shift, a vertical translation. When A goes negative, that's a reflection in the x-axis. OK, let's put A back to 1. So let's go back to our starting point. Right, D. So there's our starting y equals sine x, right? If we wrote that out with all the values, it would just be 1 sine 1x, one you know, and then the 0. So just sine x. Okay, I'm going to change B. And you're going to say, all right, what change, what happens when I change B? So what's changing? The period, right? So the period was 2 pi, and now the period is, well, let's see if we can get a 2 thirds pi. Right, so the period is 2 thirds pi. It's really handy. It's a lot handier than I thought it would be. Period is 2 thirds pi. So, B, it's not the period, right? Unfortunately. You know, nice thing, D, it's the midline, right? Just think midline, there's a D in midline. I don't know, you know, A, amplitude, that's the easiest, right? Because A is for amplitude. B, it affects the period. Uh, changes the period. And technically, and this is given to you on your formula sheet, I don't know if I have a formula sheet handy, Yes, I do. On the formula sheet, they give you this. Period is equal to 2 pi over b. Period equals 2 pi over b. And the emphasis is that we have to be in radians, right? Because we know normally the period is 2 pi. 
So the period is 2 pi over b. And this can be rearranged, right? So you can rearrange this to say b is equal to 2 pi over the period. You know, the question is, when do we use each one? Like, why do we have two forms of this, right? And so the deal is this. If you know the b value, right, if I give you the equation, I give you a, b, c, and d, you can now tell me, hey, I know what the amplitude is. I know where the midline is. Uh, I know what the b value is, so I can tell you how the, what the period is, right? Because I can use this formula if you give me b. And this formula used here is if I give you a graph, right? I give you the graph, and from the graph you can figure out the period, then you can get the value of b, right? So it allows you to kind of work both ways. If you know the b value, you calculate the period. If you know the period, you can calculate the b value. So what will happen is we'll give you a graph. Here's a graph. You give me the equation, and I'll give you an equation, and you describe all the characteristics of the graph from the equation. And that's what we're going to do over the next few days, really. Is right. Here's an equation. Describe what the graph looks like. Sketch it out for me. Tell me all about it. And here's a graph. Get me the equation of that graph. Okay. And that's really what we're looking at in this unit. That's the important stuff. Okay. Let's go back to. So we can see that the period is 2 pi over 3, right? Because the b value is 3. So let's say we take the b value. You know, and if I, in, whoops, if I increase the b value, then it just gets tighter and tighter, right? And this is just showing us one period. Oh, look, so 2 pi over 7, and I got a b value of 7, right? And there it is, because this point is fixed at one period. Okay, if I move this way, so let's go below. I'm going to try and get there. If b is 1, there's our period is 2 pi, right? That's our normal b value is 1. And so the period is 2 pi divided by 1, or 2 pi. If I can get this to be a half, then the period is 4 pi, right? Because it's 2 pi divided by a half, and 2 divided by a half is 4, right? You can try that out. 2 divided by 0.5 is 4. And it's 4 pi, OK? 4 pi radians. Um, and I could make B negative, and you know what that would do. It would be a reflection in the x-axis, which we don't do. Okay? I mean, I'll show it to you. Just You can see it happen. See that happen? Right? You don't really see it happen, right, because it's reflecting. And you could sort of see it happen because this point is a max, and if I go to there, now this point is a min, so it's a reflect, but don't worry about that. Okay? We don't deal with that. So we'll put B back to 1. So what's left? C. Technically, you do not have to know much about C. Okay? But I'm going to play with C. You tell me what it does. So what happens when I change C? So I'm calling this the starting point, right? Zero, zero. When I change C, what happens to the starting point? It changes. Okay, so, oh, come on, that's the value I want. There. 1.57, remember that number? What's 1.57? Pi over 2, right? Yeah, pi divided by 2 is 1.57. Oh, it's probably a, a message about the robotics. They've had their first match. They were up first thing this morning, like that was just right. Uh, <laughs> And, and they weren't quite ready for prime time at the time. But we'll see. So you notice that this 1.57, that shifted the start point over to pi over 2, right? Because there's, there's pi, so that's pi over 2. So C is called the phase shift. Phase shift. And all that basically does is it shifts the graph left or right. Okay, so it shifts left or right. And really that's all you need to know is that C is a phase shift. You don't have to be able to calculate C. They won't give you weird values of C and expect you to figure them out. I will, because I expect a little bit more out of you, but you know, I'm gonna make them easy. And I'm going to give you a formula that goes with it. So I have slightly higher expectations, 
right, that we can learn this, because we used to teach it and apply it all the time this way, and I'm doing sort of the same thing. So I will expect you to know what C does, but I'm going to give you a little formula to go along with it, or a little uh, thing to go along with it. Um, so that's all our values, right? That's what A, B, and C do to the sine graph. And one more thing we're going to look at, and more because the... Uh, more because the, the book emphasizes this, and it's not all bad, is we want to look at the graph of well, what goes with sine, if not cosine. So there's the graph of sine x, which this time is in green, and the graph of cosine x, which this time is in red, and they're related. Let's see, can I zoom in a bit? Move this over. So here's sine x, right? The one we're familiar with. It starts at 0, 0, has its maximum here, and then it comes back to the middle. And you can see that the cosine graph, which is this red one, is the sine graph, but it's shifted, right? Everything is shifted. Uh, we're looking, I'm trying to shift the green to the red. So this, there, the green. So you can see that it starts at the top, and when does it get back to the top? 2 pi. So the cosine graph has a period of 2 pi. The cosine graph has an amplitude of? Come on, this is your cube. 1. So it's got the same period as sine. It's got the same amplitude as sine. It's got, uh, what is it? it's got the same midline as sine, right? But what it has, or what the difference between sine and cosine is, it's a phase shift, right? If we take the cosine graph and shift it pi over 2 units to the right, it will become the sine graph. So the difference between sine and cosine for us is simply a phase shift of 90 degrees to the right, or pi over 2 radians, so let's just say shift y equals cos x pi over 2 radians or 90 degrees to the right. Right? And you get sine x. Okay, so technically really that's about all you need to know. Is cosine is a is a shifted graph of sine. Book's going to ask you a few more questions on cosine, have you do some graphing of it and do some comparing of stuff, which is fine. It's good. You know, you should do some exploration on your own of this because uh, you've got to make sense of this stuff yourself. Okay, so that pretty much covers today's stuff. And now you can work on the work, and I've modified a little bit. So you notice we're not doing 8.1 at all. Okay, so we're starting off with 8.2, and I've said 1 to 6 and 8, so you're like, you don't even have to do 7 or 9. Um, 7 just asks, why is it called a wave? So why do you think the sine function is called a wave? It looks like a wave, right? It looks like waves in the ocean, right? It's up and down. You can see these waves going off all the way, you know, to the left or to the right, infinitely, forever, both directions. Okay, so we've covered what a radian is. Right? And that's all you need to know. Radians exist, and mostly your calculator will be in radian mode. When we do real life stuff for sine, and that's really our emphasis here is real life stuff for sine, like temperatures or a height on a Ferris wheel or stuff like that, right? Those are all described by a sinusoidal function. The height of a piston in a motor with respect to time, right? Because it goes up and down. Um, anything to do with that. All right, so homework time.